Okay. Well, welcome everybody to this executive director's chat. Today, we're going to be talking about DEI for small teams, initiating, excuse me, initiating equity for impact. Uh, my name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. In a moment, I'm going to introduce Lashika Phillips. She's the director of equity, inclusion, and diversity and culture here at TechSoup. But before we do, um, for those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time on our Zoom, let me show you how you can engage on the next slide. Basically, everybody comes in on mute. So we would love if you would stay on mute for the quality of the recording. We're going to allow you to ask questions. You can come on video or you can just use the raise your hand option to let us acknowledge you to ask your, your question or allow you to speak. That would be great. And I am so excited about this topic because as we were coming in, we were asking like where you are in your DEI journey. And a lot of people was like, I don't know. And that's the question I always like too. So I'm excited about this webinar. Lashika is going to tell you more about herself and what she does here at TechSoup. So I'm going to turn this over to her and welcome Lashika. And thank you for doing this webinar today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to see all of you here. It's been a while since I've been a part of EV Chat, uh, so I'm happy to see some familiar faces, some familiar names, and I'm really excited that you all have decided to join this conversation. As Aretha said, as we were getting started, um, folks were saying, I'm not sure where I am, my DEI journey. I'm not sure if I even do DEI work. Like, what does that mean? And I love all of those questions. And happy to be able to answer those and address some of those um, today. So before we get started, just a little bit about me. Um, as Rita said, I'm the Director of Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture here at TechSoup. Um, very rewarding uh, position here to be able to help lead um, and orchestrate around equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture for TechSoup, our partners, the NGOs that we serve. Um, I you know, realized last week that most of my career, like it really has been nonprofit work. And I'm really excited about that. Um, I love being a part of mission-driven work. And um, my, I have a passion for AI, which you'll see in a series that we have coming up. So I'm really excited uh, to, to be here. Uh, DEI is my jam. I got started in this field way back um, in the in the early 2000s, um, I was a part of a supplier diversity program. So fast forward to today, um, now we are working on EIDC at TechSoup, again, Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture, and I'm happy to have this conversation. So today, yes, we are going to be discussing how to initiate and how to champion um, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And let me just pause for a moment. Uh, because someone mentioned, well, what is DEI? And I love that question. So I think very simple is it would be, I would say that it is a, a group of standards, I, I would say, or philosophy around ensuring that everyone that is a part of a group, organization, community, um, feels included and has a sense of belonging that is all around diversity equity and inclusion. So that's when, when we say DEI or DEI programming, that is what we're referring to. So before we talk about, before we dive into how we can initiate that, we have to just take a moment and look at the state of DEI today, okay? And then we'll go over some terms and principles that are key to understanding how we can champion equity where we are. And then we will explore some practical tips using TechSoup as an example um, and as a case study. So you will hear a lot about what TechSoup is doing. And this is really only to encourage you, to inspire you, to empower you, to do some of these th same things at your organization. Or maybe you get an idea from some of the things that we will share. I'm so really excited uh, for that. We will always have time for Q&A throughout this conversation. This is ED Chat. So this is not me chatting with you to you, right? This is us having a conversation. So I strongly encourage you to put your questions in chat throughout this conversation, but we will have time for Q&A at the end. And before we go, I'm going to make sure that you have um, some practical tips and an outline for how you can take action, okay, with where you are, because that's going to be very, very important. And so before we dive in, I just have to have this, this disclaimer, right? Um, so I am not 
a legal advisor. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a human resources um, executive or specialist. That is not my specialty. Um, and this is not legal advice. We are not experts of DEI, but we have, however, started our internal journey, right? Our journey for DEI and EIDC at TechSoup, like many of you. And we want to share our lessons and our insights with you, with hopes, like I said before, that you are inspired to take action, right? And to initiate and, and implement equity where you are. That's gonna be very important. All right, so let's take a look at the state of DEI. I'm sure some of this may not be new to you, um, but according to some recent reports, the overall sentiment around the current state of diversity, equity, and inclusion um, is that those efforts seem to be either be stagnated or people are fatigued, burned out. And there's always, or not always, but there have been recently some um, persistent in issues around political restrictions and restraints that we have uh, pertaining to the EI. You've seen this across, uh, the, across the country here in the U.S., um, there are some states that are, you know, you're limited. Uh, some organizations are limited as to what you can do. So this is the current state of DEI. And I'm curious to know, is any of this resonate with any of you today? Um, have you heard about DEI fatigue? Are, are you familiar with people saying that they are burnt out around equity initiatives, right? Um, are you aware that there's been a decrease in momentum and funding for DEI initiatives, especially since 2020. How many of you remember when 2020 I uh, was here and here in the United States and there were so many initiatives popping up all over the country? Well, not just the country, but really all over the world. And it seems that fast forward to today, 2024, some of that has really kind of slowed down. Do you all resonate with that at all? Let me check the chat. And then the political restrictions, are you all seeing that in your area? Um, let me see if I can go here and chat and see. Because again, this is ED chat. I just want to make sure. Yes, I'm seeing. Yes, 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 you're seeing this. Yes. So that that's important to be aware of, right? Because if you are in the process of implementing uh, equity initiatives and you're not aware of the current state, it can be very challenging, right? So just arm yourself with this knowledge that I can, like, like I said, I will share this presentation so you can take a look at these articles and these reports. And there are many, many more out there, right? But this is important for, for all of us to be aware of. So our solution, TechSoup solution, um, to this is to engage in conversations like this, right? And to engage in collaboration and sharing of practical ways to champion equity in the sector. And again, we're not experts. We are just simply sharing our journey um, to, to help you and to help give you some ideas for what you can do um, where you are in your organization. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is a part of a series of webinars, a series of EV chat. And so we'll have an, another one in May and then one in June. Hope that you can sign up for that. Uh, we'll have information at the end. And before we dive into these um, foundational equity principles, just want to see, uh, Aretha, if I've missed any questions. Is there anything that we need to uh, address before moving forward? Yeah, I like that Mark said that he's from Idaho and he said his legislature legislature is taking actions to forbid DEI. And um, someone else said the same thing is happening in um, in the UK. So mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it is, it's happening. And we just, we have to be aware. And I think that having conversations like this will prompt, well, I think it will encourage uh, creativity, prompt some creativity, because I think that there are some ways that we can um, we can maneuver and we can navigate even when the the climate is the way that it is. I think that we can still be impactful and still have some meaningful initiatives, um, which is again why you all are here, right? Um, so that that's really really great. So let's move on to foundational equity principles. And so looking at just laying groundwork for um, with principles and terms. 
think it's very important to understand the difference between equity and equality, right? So think about uh, uh, equality. Equality means to provide the same resources or opportunities to everyone. Um, and that can sometimes mean that something or someone is overlooked, right? And that the fact that people start from different places due to various reasons. So that would be equality. Now, equity would be would involve acknowledging those various uh, differences that I spoke about a minute ago, just acknowledging those uh, and allocating resources and opportunities based on specific needs of individuals or communities or groups to ensure um, to ensure an equal outcome, equal results. And I, I know there for a while there was an image floating around. Um, it's uh, somewhat similar to what you have here on the screen. So on the screen, I have an image. Um, the showing is demonstrating with graphics equality uh, and equity. And so on the first image representing equality, you see that everyone, regardless of their height, regardless of where they are, everyone has the same size block to stand on. That is equality. Everybody has the same thing. Everyone is equal. Looking at equity though, equity, however, says, okay, we recognize that everyone is different. And so for each person or for each difference, we have support so that now everything, everybody is, is equitable because now everyone has what they need in order to have that desired equitable outcome. And in this case, it's to view a, a game, some sporting game, okay? And looking at inclusion and diversity, so with... Uh, Looking at inclusion and diversity, uh, equity principles emphasizes the importance of including diverse voices, different voices, different backgrounds and perspectives in all levels of, of the organization and from staff, and leadership to board members and all, its, uh, all stakeholders. This diversity should reflect the community served. And it helps to ensure that programs and policies are relevant and effective. And so I think this is a perfect time for me to pause and just to share with you why did TechSoup call their DEI program EIDC? I absolutely love this question. And it was very intentional. Um, and so with naming the program at TechSoup, it was important for us to prioritize equity. So that's why you see equity person in our program name, EIDC. So equity, prioritizing equity to ensure inclusion, to bring meaning to diversity, to build culture. So that, that is where we are uh, at TechSoup in our naming convention for our programming. And then looking at cultural competence, it's just, it's important for organizations to develop uh, cultural competence, right? Understanding and respect for the cultures and experiences of staff, other stakeholders. And this involves active listening, active learning about those cultures, engaging in, with community members um, in decision-making processes and tailoring services to meet those unique needs. So that's what we're thinking about when we're talking about cultural competence. And then, continuous learning and adaptation, recognizing that it is a journey. It is not a one-stop destination, right? We are continuously learning. We are continuously evolving uh, and adapting. And so I just want to encourage um, you to think about that. You know, how are you continuing your, your learning, uh, you know, of these different aspects and concepts? And I just have to ask, you know, while we're here talking about these principles, are there other core principles that come to mind when you think about um, equity principles? Are there other, I, I can think of one, I can think of one. What about accessibility? Is that not a foundational equity principle? Accessibility, right? Can you all think of any more, are there any more? And I'm gonna check the chat to make sure. Any, did I miss anything from chat? I, don't, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything, Aretha. No, but while you were talking, I was thinking yeah. accessibility. I was thinking about accessibility as well for the hearing impaired and also for people who are visually, you know, who can't read on the screen. 
but there was some comments uh, from Kathy and Mark, and I, I would love for them to, at the end, to unmute themselves to talk about this. Um, they both serve in New Hampshire and in two states, New Hampshire and um, Vermont, and they have okay. two different perspectives legislatively on DEI. And it says, they said it creates challenges to carry out their mission consistently. That's mm. pretty deep, huh? It is. It is. It is deep. And I'm just, I'm here to say that I, I hear you. And I do think that this is an opportunity. This is a time and a season for those of us who are serious about this work to be creative. Creative and collaboration and intentionality is the key to this today. That is it. That that is how um and, and we'll get we'll get to all of that. I'm loving this. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. So we we will get to that. And I would love to hear from other people how they um have been creative and moving moving the needle, right? Um, so I'm really, really happy to see the the engagement in chat. Lashika, a few can yeah. uh, Mark says respect for immigrants from other countries. Yes. See, that goes that goes with cultural competence. Absolutely. It's also inclusion and diversity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, um, was okay. we answered that. We we have those. Yes, we do. And so now I would love for us to start looking at because I just talked about, you know, this is the time for us to be creative. It's time for us to start partnering with other people. Uh, and so how can we do this, right? How can we do this? So I want to talk about some tips um, of how we can do this. And again, prefacing that we're not experts, right? Uh, but TechSoup has done some things, you know, and we think that we can share those, and like I said, in hopes that maybe you're inspired by something, maybe not to do the exact same thing that we did. I, I don't know, but I'm hoping that some ideas start sparking, you know, as we, as we continue. So for nonprofit executive directors wanting to uh, integrate or expand equity principles in their organizational culture, practical steps, you know, as we've said before, it's gonna be, it, it's key for meaningful implementation, right? And for impact. So when developing or maybe revamping your strategic approach, um, I want to just give you these tips, okay? So first, looking at leadership and allyship. The first thing that we did, uh, the EIDC team at TechSoup, is before we just started coming up with ideas and thinking about initiatives, what we did is we decided to identify at least two senior leaders who were dedicated to supporting these initiatives with us within the organization, right? Kind of like if some in some organizations, you may call that an executive sponsor. Um, you may even call that uh, an ally, but it's going to be very important that, that you do that. You identify other people within your organization. And sometimes you can find some external uh, contacts, some external uh, connects to help you to be able to collaborate and to help move the needle. Um, but that's going to be very key. Also think about within your organization, what teams and what people will you need to collaborate with in order to make in order to make the events happen or the activities happen. But like, what does that look like? I know for us, it was very important for us to um, partner with our marketing team now, as, as I am here right now with Aretha, right? That was very important for us to have that connection in the very beginning. And so if you are have already started your journey and you're looking to revamp, then just take a step back and think about who, who within the organization should should we be connecting with or will we need to be connecting with to make this happen? Um, also looking at internal assessments. So this, and I just wanna preface this here that an internal assessments, they don't have to be extensive and expensive, right? Now you can, but again, this, this conversation is specifically for small teams, right? So thinking about, 
when you start thinking about data or you start thinking about assessments or an audit, all of that can seem very complex. It can be, but I want you to think, I want you to just take a step back and think about what you do have. Almost every organization that's represented here today, you have access, whether you personally have, someone in your organization does have access to internal data or internal demographic data for staff in your organization, right? That's a great place to start if you want to if you want to start looking at numbers. Uh, another idea, uh, another thing that we've done at TechSoup in terms of internal assessments would be, especially for qualitative data, is we did a listening tour where we went through. It was virtual. Uh, it was all remote, and we were able to interview and meet with every team within the organization, right? Yes, that was very tedious, time consuming, absolutely. Um, I can say it was extremely rewarding, right? Because there was information that was gathered in that process that a survey may not have captured. So just want to give you those, those examples when you are thinking about internal assessments, because it's going to be important for you to know where you are to build and start thinking about where you want to go. Um, so training and development. And just recognizing again, training and development is ongoing. It is ongoing. And it again, it does not have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive. And you, maybe you don't have a training and development team at your organization. That's, that is okay. Start with where you are. Um, one of the tools that we've used at TechSoup um, is LinkedIn Learning. We've used those tools and there are so many other uh, online tools, online websites and webinars um, for free or little cost that really have rich value, rich content to help you on your, on your journey, whether it's learning terms, whether it's learning how to roadmap and think strategically. And then last but not least, looking at um, celebrating diversity, right? And what we did early on at TechSoup is we established a diversity council. And so this diversity council is just a group of staff volunteers um, that would meet to help plan various events, presentations, and other opportunities um, for learning and to celebrate diversity within TechSoup. Then we later uh, formed some resource groups and affinity groups and we'll talk more about that in our in the webinar on May first. So, uh, before we move on, are there other areas that you think that leaders should consider when they're prioritizing or revamping um, the culture around equity? Anybody have any thoughts here? Again, EB chat. I'm going to check the chat to see if there are any questions. Let's see. You uh, go ahead. You see it. What's the name of the training platform you mentioned? Oh, LinkedIn Learning. Okay. Yeah, LinkedIn Learning is the one that I mentioned. I saw someone. I guess the deck will be shared after this. Referrals for equity consultants and organizations. Uh, interesting. So I there is a um there was a nonprofit organization that they had a um it was a public. Google Sheets that had almost a thousand. It, it may even be more than that now. Um, and I can find that and I can share that. Um, maybe we can share the link with the, with the email here. Um, I'm trying to go through these, uh, through the chats, but is there, is there something that I need to address right away? No, that, that was it. That was, that it. was it, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, does anybody have any questions Well. Uh, any questions here or any thoughts? Feel free to use the raise your hand button. Yes, and we please. will see where you are and acknowledge you and ask you to unmute yourself. Awesome. And I saw that um someone said Leslie or uh, someone said that they've seen a B in um e -E yes. like for belonging. Yes. So. Yes. Yes, I have seen that too. Um, how many of you have also seen uh, programs that are called JEDI? It's J-E-D-I. Have, have you all seen that? 
and the J is for justice. So yeah, organizations are, I mean, they're being more intentional, I think, about the naming conventions of the program. And, um, you know, as someone who is, uh, you know, intentional with naming and you know, thinking about EIDC and TechSoup, I appreciate that, you know. I think that I would rather be intentional than trendy, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, I don't know, that's just at the core of real work, right? I, I, <laughs> that's powerful. Marie said, one unique and creative approach to implementing DEI in a small organization is to host diversity dialogue sessions. I love that. Me too. We'd love to hear more about that. I would love to hear more about that. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And so we've talked about embedding equity in our internal work, right? Sh share some ideas, how TechSoup is doing that. Uh, something that we also do internally, again, just thinking about um, everything that we've talked about, the cultural competence, looking at um, inclusion and diversity. But one of the things that we do internally is recognize the one. So at TechSoup, it's a global organization. So we have people working all over the world, like all over the world. Okay. So to ensure that people don't get left behind and people feel included, there is an emphasis on meeting times, okay, within our organization. There's just some intention around that, right? Just making sure if we set a meeting um, at this time, and especially if it's a community event, will staff in Asia be able to participate? Will staff, you know, over here be able to participate? Will everybody be able to join? And so that is something that we are intentional about at TechSoup. Again, that's internal work. Let's look at external work. How are we embedding equity in our external work? Does anybody have any examples? Any examples here? Would love to hear from you all, from you executive directors and other nonprofit leaders. What are you doing or what would you like to do? What have you seen done? You see that Marie says imaginary in our ads imagery excuse me imagery duh the oh, language great. you use to describe an audience I love that that's so powerful Ooh, imagery in our ad in your ads it's a good idea that's just an example she said etc that's good yeah I love that I love that what else for external work external work so that would be think about Think about the NGOs, the 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 or the people that you are servicing, your community, your clients, or your members. Um, and you may be embedding equity in your work and may not even realize it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so maybe you all are just thinking, and that's good. I I that's fine. Yeah. But I'll give you an example. Another. Well, does somebody have an example? Because I. Yeah, Kathy, in the chat, Kathy put, we've embedded DEI principles in our career readiness curriculum for oh, youth and training for employers and educators. Oh, I love that, Kathy. If you don't mind, I would love to hear how you did that. I think, I think not just me, I think we all want to know how, how did you embed DEI principles in your career readiness curriculum? How? Do, is it okay if I unmute? Yes, sure. it is. Okay, so we um, we very early on in DEI efforts just steeped our staff and board in everything that we could do internally. And then for us, the next stage was what can we do externally? Mm -hmm. And so we have 20-year-old career readiness curriculum that we've, we refresh every year, but we've never really looked at it with a DEI lens. So we took our DEI standards for our internal organization and we applied them to our curriculum and the training that we do for employers who like host youth and internships and um, educators who teach career readiness principles to youth. 
so that all those DEI principles are just part of that curriculum and that training that we do. And that's why when I said earlier, it's tricky because we serve two different states and one of those two states has a law against teaching certain mm -hmm. concepts in schools. And so we had to be really careful with how we packaged our new DEI um, curriculum to um, work for public schools in that state so they could actually teach it and use it in schools. Um, so kind of some good news of the work that we're doing, but also some of the challenges. Um, so I see someone asking for examples. We work with like a vocational rehabilitation state agency and they helped comb our curriculum with us and give us feedback on what we could do to be more inclusive to people with all different abilities. And we worked with um, another nonprofit organization that serves um, youth from low income backgrounds to help us make sure that our language included them and doing things that we do career readiness. So we might've like talked about in a lesson how to dress for an interview. Well, that might not apply to all youth the way we might've worded it previously. So now the way, this is just kind of a simple example. No, uh, this is perfect. But we changed the way we worded it with the help of a lot of other people because our staff doesn't have the expertise of inclusivity for every single population. So we've worked with other partners to just make that language as, as inclusive as possible. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to put you on the spot. I really appreciate that. And, you know, I, I think that listening to Kathy, you covered, you covered the three things that I said. Do you all remember when I said the what it's going to take and the key for DEI right now is going to be collaboration. Kathy spoke about collaborating with other folks, right? It's going to be intentionality. Well, that's very clear in the example that she gave, right? It, it's all of that is key. All of that is key. I just missed my, my last point. <laughs> Just, just missed my last point looking at chat here. But no, this is really, really good. Thank you, Kathy. Anybody have any other examples of how you are embedding equity uh, in, in your external work? Or maybe you've seen another example. Maybe it's not at your organization. I would love to hear how, how you're doing that. And I would also want to hear if you're not sure. Maybe you say, hey, we do this, but I'm not sure if this is equity lands or not. Oh, I see a hand raised. Yes, please feel free, Marie, to come off mute. And I'll even turn on my camera. Oh, nice. <laughs> it, it's more of, um, I think, a pet peeve, and it's a debate I know a lot of people, some people have, um, and that's the term, using the term BIPOC, that when we talk about equity, and we say BIPOC. It is a pet peeve for me and for a lot of people. Um, just some background, I work, uh, um, my nonprofit, we create um, virtual education for black birthing people. And there was a major discussion with, with a, a funder because they wanted us to say BIPOC people. Um, and for me, that is use a, a catch all because when you say black indigenous people of color, you're taking Asian people and you're putting them in with black people. And these are very diverse groups who've had very di different experiences just in America. Um, even within a single ethnic group, you'll find a whole spectrum of different perspectives, belief stories. You look at this whole debate among people with what is country right now, right? And as a woman who's originally from Kentucky, I think I know what is country. And um, and then someone from Texas who may have a whole different perspective, right? So, and, but, and yet we both have the same skin color. So if you can't paint people within a single ethnic group as the same, how are we going to do that with a bigger group of people? And yet that's what we do when we say BIPOC or we create these initiatives that are focused on BIPOC. And then we use terms like disadvantaged communities, and we tend to then lump everyone who is um, Asian, must be a first gen, and they, and my son-in-law is Chinese, and his father has been here since 
the 1900s or his family can date back to the 1900s. And so, but when people meet him, they say, oh, how long have you guys been in the country? Probably before your family. How about that one? And so those are the things that I think we tend to overlook when we talk about being respectful of diversity. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Thank you so, so very much. And, you know, I think what's interesting about the term BIPOC is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember seeing that term 10, 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> right? That was, that. this is, this is new, right? And I'm saying that because I think that as we evolve, I think these terms will evolve as well, right? I, I saw head nods, you know, as you were speaking. So you're not the only person, you know, with that sentiment. And I, I think that again, it's going to require us to be intentional, right? That collaboration that comes in to make sure that we are getting various perspectives um, when we're thinking about identity, because that's, that is the, at the core of what you, you just talked about. It is identity. And identity is just one part of a dimension of dimensions of diversity. Uh, there's a chart that I can share about dimensions of diversity. And, and identity is one part. It's one part. But it is so important. It is so important. So thank you for opening that up. Love to have these these conversations. Um, does anybody have? I want it. Yeah. I wanted to be able to speak to the BIPOC term just okay. really quick. Okay. Um, and 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 here's why. I understand the controversy behind the term, but my organization, um, we have um, we had a different issue. Um, in that we are not trying to reduce anybody. I'm an African-American woman, I have to come over, I have to go into the conference room because I'm actually at work right now. Um, we, we're not trying to reduce anyone, we're not trying to minimize anyone's experiences. What we needed is a term that covered a, a larger group of people. So it was, it's difficult to be able to, when you're speaking to funders or donors, or mayors and say, you know, and list out every ethnicity that we're trying to cover, trying to cover a wide range of um, people um, of color. And that doesn't always include just black people. It doesn't always include just indigenous people. It doesn't always include us. So we are trying to look for a term that allows we are I'm, I'm sorry, Crystal, I don't know. Um, Crystal. Crystal, can you hear me? One one moment. There's a yes. there's a lot of feedback, and I'm having a hard time. Aretha, is it is it just my connection? No, it's not. You have a um, bad connection, Crystal. Oh, okay, okay. Well, no worries, no worries. Um, you guys can't hear me at all. It's breaking so, up. You sound good when you just said okay, you can't hear me at all, but it's breaking up. So we, we're getting like bits and pieces of what you're saying. Ah, okay. It's I'm not clear even now. Nope. Okay. No worries. Thank you. Oh. Well, please put it, please put what you were wanting to uh, express. If you can please put that in the chat, because I was able to hear a, a little bit of what you were saying. And it sounds like, and Please correct me in chat if, if I misunderstood, but it sounds like at the core of what you're saying is that your organization uses and leans on the term BIPOC to ensure inclusion and diversity. That's what- Absolutely. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Can you hear me now? Because I had to move to a different room. Actually, I'm just going to go outside. You, you sound uh, underwater. I sound what? It's like you're underwater. Like. Ah, okay. Maybe it's my headset. But yes, and, and I'm gonna unmute, but yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Okay. We're trying to we're trying to be a lot more inclusive and making sure that we cover everybody that we're trying to cover by using the term. Um, and because there's so much controversy about the term, we finally had to write an article on our website, a blog article, just to explain what we do and why we do it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. Um, really appreciate your feedback. And I do believe that there are some folks, they, they agree. They understand. I'm seeing 
um, notes in the chat here, but uh, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Are there any, we're at the point where um, Q and A, so I'm really enjoying how this is going. The, does anybody have any other questions or thoughts? Um, we talked a lot today. We talked about um, the state of DEI. We talked about various uh, terms and foundational understanding and principles for um, initiating equity and your organizations and specifically where you are, right? Not trying to, um, it doesn't have to be complex. Now we know that it can be challenging. Yes, yes, yes. But we can start where we are, right? Anybody have any thoughts or questions there? Oh, let's see. Um, I see Mark, uh, how about diversity data? Diversity of data collection, many surveys are biased. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, Mark, I I agree. I know exactly what you mean. And I know that uh, I have been attending a, a series of webinars via Candid. So if you are familiar with Candid, um, and I can put the name here in chat, but Candid they have been, um, and I think that all of these are, are archived if you go to their website, but they have a series specifically on that topic, Mark. Yes, of, about data collecting um, and specifically within uh, within those communities. So yes, yes, Mark, I see you. Uh, you double raise your hand. I love that. Go for it. <laughs> oh, Zoom has a setting. You raise your hand and it, it, a camera automatically reads it and, and pops up. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's the latest edition I of Zoom. AI, yeah. While while this workshop's been going on, on a different computer here in my office, I got an email about a workshop in a few weeks that a nearby community college in Walla Walla, Washington is putting on, on this subject of uh, diversity and data collection. Maybe mm. the two computers are listening to each other. <laughs> uh, I... Um, Unfortunately, it's it's an in-person workshop. I don't uh, think it has remote capabilities, but the speaker, this is a speaker that maybe people want to look into because she mm -hmm. started a company called Namaste Data. Her name mm -hmm. is uh, Mina, Mina Das. Okay. And I'll put I'll, I'll put the web link in the chat Please. box. Uh, data is for everyone dot teachable dot com. Yes. Uh, about okay. about how to make sure your data collection is not biased. And I just wanted to share it with everyone in the group because this looks really interesting. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I can't wait for you to put that in the chat. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. Really appreciate that. So we have about 15 uh, minutes before, uh, before we wrap up. And I promised to you that before we go, I wanted to share a, a little bit about, and just give you an outline of how you can begin to start road mapping and planning and having an action plan for some of the things that that we talked about um, that we talked about today. So, I, uh, as I've mentioned before, and I will, if you follow us <laughs> and attend the the rest of the webinars in this series. I promise you, you will hear me say this repeatedly, and, and it is taking action does not have to be difficult or costly. I promise you, it, it does not. Simply start where you are, and something I say all the time, try not to reinvent the wheel. So that's what our EIDC team here at TechSoup has done. And so what we did is we've established our roadmap. And, and, and I have an example of this chart if you're interested. I'm happy to share it with you. But these the bullet points that you see uh, on your screen, these were not developed overnight. This came after us going through training, us being a part of cohorts and other networks learning about strategizing around equity, how to embed equity, you know, within teams, within organizations. And so this is what we have come up with. And if I were to show you, and I can't, I don't have a third screen, but if I could share with you our roadmap, 
this came just right out of our out of our roadmap, right? So the first thing that that you want to look at is obviously the goal. But again, as I said, keep it simple. So in order to keep it simple, our recommendation is to think about one thing of all of the things that we talked about here today. What is one thing that you want to accomplish at your organization or for your team by the end of this year? Just one thing. And then just make sure that that one thing is aligned with your organization's mission or strategic objectives. Um, you will find that when it is, you find you have more support. You find that you're able to move from point A to B to C to the end when it is aligned, okay? And then secondly, look at your motivation and your why behind the thing that you want to accomplish. And can you clearly explain the ideal state versus the reality of, of what you're trying to improve or expand. And then think about the actions that are needed to close whatever gap it is that you're wanting to close. And what is the anticipated time commitment for each one of those things? That's gonna be important, again, because collaboration. We want to ensure that we have um, things already lined up and prepared so when a partner, an ally, a sponsor uh, approaches us or we approach them for opportunities to collaborate, we can say, this will only take X amount of time, right? Over the course of two months or a year or whatever the case is. But knowing that in advance can really set you up for success. And then last, definitely not least, is where are there opportunities for collaboration? So think about the skills the tools or systems that would be needed in order for you to accomplish that thing. And think about who would you need to collaborate? What teams within your organization or what people within your organization would you have to work with in order to make this happen? Right. So think about all of those things as you are as you're planning and um, putting together your roadmap. Uh, any questions here? Any questions here? I'm going to hop over the chat really quick. Okay. No questions here? Okay, well, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> and so before we go, uh, first of all, thank you all so much. I really uh, enjoyed being here, doing the ED chat with, with you all. Thank you, Aretha. Um, for this opportunity. Um, just want to point this out before we go. So, oh, and I did see your note, Aretha. Yes, thank you. There is a three question survey. Really means a lot to me if you just take 10 seconds, maybe less than that to complete the survey. It's really going to, to help us in our next steps. But as I was saying, as, as we wrap up, um, again, thank you everyone for your participation and really looking forward to connecting with you and hearing from you how your journey is going. And if there's anything that we can do to be supportive, please let us know. But I want you to walk away with, with these things. First thing is, um, if you can, try to complete a roadmap or an action plan for that one goal. If you can have it um, done by the next webinar, we can look at that together, right? But complete a roadmap or complete an action plan for that, that one goal that you want to complete by the end of the year. I think that's a really great next step, you know, from a conversation like this. Um, even thinking about those articles and the other things that people have said, you know, how can you bring that into planning and strategic objectives for your team, your organization. Um, next, register for the next two webinars in this series. Um, so in the one in May on May 1st, we'll dive into uh, celebrating diversity. And then um, in June, we'll finish the series with exploring how we can leverage artificial intelligence to support our DEI work. I'm really excited about, about that and how we are using AI for some, some work here. And lastly, uh, you know, at thinking about next steps, please share your thoughts in the survey that we have. Um, it's like I said, it's only three questions and it's going to help us to develop 
an online community that is dedicated to providing peer-to-peer -peer engagement, online events, toolkits, sector insights, and other resources. And also, um, when you think about sharing, feel free, please share this with a co-conspirator with you, uh, within your community and within your network. Um, I really started using this word after a conversation I had recently with um, Satanya Fierce. If you don't know who she is, she's the CEO of Peak Grant Making. And we had a conversation and that word just kept coming up, co-conspirator, co-conspirator. And so I, I really love that. And so I appreciate all of you being co-conspirators in this conversation um, with us today. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, I don't have any other content to share other than, hey, I would love to stay connected with you. You can reach us at EIDC at techsoup.org. Uh, I am going to hop over to chat just to see if there are any um, final questions, any thoughts. Um, yeah, feel free to come off mute or raise your hand. We'll love to hear from you uh, as we as we close. Lots of thank yous in the chat, Lachika, for hosting this. And they said they'll be registering for the new upcoming webinars as well. Great. All right. And don't forget the survey, please. The survey, really, the survey, uh, and, and I, I know I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I have ended a webinar and just ended and went on about my day, right? <laughs> guilty. I know. I know. It's so easy to do. But please, it's the reason that I'm, I'm asking um, for you to do this is we are working to build an online community. Um, and this online community is dedicated to conversations like we have here today, where you're able to have these peer-to-peer -peer conversations. You're able to exchange information. We have toolkits and I'm able to like share the actual a roadmap that we're working on. Like, so we're building this community. And so your thoughts and your feedback from these three simple questions, I promise is going to help us um, finalize that and just make that better for the community. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other final thoughts? I always love giving people back, you know, time. Like, here you go. Um, any other final thoughts from you, Arisa, or anything you see in the chat? No, thank you so much. Again, we'll be sending out the video and the slides. And yes, we'll send the survey out as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.